This week, Bam Rodriguez is a unified champion after a dominant win over Sonny Edwards, but is the 23-year-old star ready for the monster? And the big day of reckoning is coming to Saudi Arabia. Greg Bishop joins me to discuss a big night for boxing's top heavyweights. Welcome to The Knockdown. I'm Chris Mannix. He is Greg Bishop. Greg, Bam Rodriguez had a massive win this past weekend, knocking out Sonny Edwards at the end of the ninth round. Just a dominant performance for a fighter who is now a two-division world champion and a one-time unified champion. So the question is, what is next for Bam Rodriguez? Now, immediately after the fight, Bam Rodriguez indicated he wanted to face Juan Francisco Estrada, who is up at 115 pounds. That is a tremendous fight in the super flyweight division. But I have an eye, and I think Matchroom Boxing has an eye, on an even bigger fight. Naoya Inoue, who on December 26th is going to go for the undisputed championship at 122 pounds. Right now, Greg, Bam is at 112, Inoue at 122. A 10-pound gap between these fighters, but a showdown between these guys ranks up there among the biggest in all of boxing. So I'll ask you this, is Bam Rodriguez ready for the monster? Wow, well, I love the question and I love the idea. And part of what I love about it is that fight just seems like a firecracker. Like you put those two guys in the ring and something or someone is bound to explode. Uh, I do think that maybe there's some value in giving Bam another fight or two maybe along the lines of what he clamored for after the win last weekend. But that would be simply to close the gap, you know, in terms of weight. I think in terms of being ready, he's ready now. I think you're looking at two of the more explosive guys in boxing, two guys who are imminently watchable, and two guys who I think should fight at some point. But because this is boxing, maybe that means it'll be in 2029. Well, if it's in 2029, it ain't gonna happen, that's for sure. Um, couple things to remember when you start thinking about a Inouye versus Bam fight. One, for everyone out there saying Inouye is just too big for Bam, Inouye as recently as 2014 was fighting at light flyweight. So he was a 108 pounder back in 2014. So he's had a comparable path to Bam Rodriguez. Yes, he's at 122. He's coming off a massive knockout win over Stephen Fulton. He's probably going to do the exact same thing to Marlon Tapala. So he's certainly grown into his body over the last few years. But this was a guy that started in the same weight range as Bam Rodriguez. The other thing to remember is that even though Bam is moving up to 115, or moving back, I should say, to 115, he may not be there for that long regardless. You know, talking to people in his team like Robert Garcia, they, they believe this kid, who's still just 23 years old, is growing very quickly and he's got the frame that you could see him fill out easily at 118 and make 122 pretty quickly if he has to i wouldn't be surprised if his reign at 115 pounds is one fight he's not going to fight chocolatito gonzalez so if he beats juan francisco estrada he may be looking to move up anyway and if he moves up and wins one fight at 118 and if in a way is still at 122 in the middle of next year i see no reason why we shouldn't be talking about Bam against Inouye for either December of 2024 or early in 2025. Yeah, no, I agree with all that. And I think that that's also why I would argue that one or two fights for Bam, you know, as he goes up at a higher weight would be helpful. It's not necessarily that I think he would get killed in the first round, you know, by Inouye if they fought tomorrow, for instance. It's that that's a heck of a fight to pick for your first one at that you know level of weight weight class and so i think just giving him a little time to do it anyway has has done and grow into his body would probably be helpful in terms of the fight itself the other thing that i think is in play here that we shouldn't forget is anyway is a massively talented boxer who's not as famous in my opinion as he should be throughout the world so putting him on a fight like this having a larger u.s audience you know people that maybe aren't hardcore boxing fans which of course you know everyone knows him and knows of what he can do i think that would be beneficial for him as well because it would open him up and his, his greatness up to a far wider uh, audience yeah i agree a fight against bam rodriguez most likely would take place over in japan because there's so much money in in a way fights over there but you know a fight against bam who's growing his fan base in the u.s has done good crowds in Texas, just had a decent crowd in Arizona. That would make a lot of sense as a Vegas-type fight 
for in a way if there's enough money uh, in the pot. And just one final thing on, you know, there's too much size between Bam and Inouye. It wasn't too long ago. We're having kind of a similar argument about Manny Pacquiao going to get up against Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya was fighting at around 147, 154. Pacquiao was in the 130s. People thought that was too big a jump. How'd that work out? For Oscar De La Hoya. Let's talk now <laughs> yeah. about the Day of Reckoning in Saudi Arabia, a huge card headlined by Anthony Joshua going up against Otto Wallin. The co-main event, if you can believe it, is Deontay Wilder, who's facing Joseph Parker in a heavyweight fight. Dimitri Bivol, also on that card. Jarrell Miller against Danny Dubois, also on that card. So it is an all-star card. But let's keep it focused, Greg, at the top of the card. You've got AJ against Wallin, Wilder against Parker. Let's start here. Who is in tougher in this fight? Anthony Joshua or Deontay Wilder? Ooh, that's a great question. In part because what I love about this era of heavyweights is they're all fallible, you know? They all have had amazing performances, some better than others. They have all, you know, lost. And, you know, you can even include Tyson Fury in, in that group sort of now at this point. I would say probably uh, Deontay Wilder. And I would say that mostly because of what's happened in his career the past couple of years. You know, you're looking at a guy who doesn't necessarily seem to be what he was before and what he was before had limitations on it you know in terms of power and uh winning fights mostly and primarily one way i think that they both could lose and i think that's part of the intrigue and it's part of why i like this era of heavyweights you can put them all against each other and there's quite a few matchups where the the favorite for the fight isn't uh you know overwhelming yeah i agree that wilder is in tough. I do have some questions, though, about Joseph Parker's punch resistance at this point. He was knocked out in a recent fight by Joe Joyce. He got knocked down and beat up pretty good in a win over Derek Chisora. We know Anthony, we know Deontay Wilder. That right hand is still there. That right hand is still his biggest weapon. And if he lands it, I wonder if Joseph Parker is going to be able to deal with it at any point in time during this fight. So that's why I think Anthony Joshua is in a little bit tougher. AJ's going up against Otto Wallin. And Otto Wallin, maybe not the most well-known guy here on U.S. soil, but he did give Tyson Fury a decent fight a few years back. Uh, AJ is taking his fight on short notice, as is Wallin, of course, but AJ having a six-week camp, preparing for a tall left-hander with a new trainer in his corner. I mean, Ben Davison is the latest to lead an Anthony Joshua corner, following up guys like Derek James, who was there for the last two fights. Uh, we saw Robert Garcia, Rob McCracken. So we have cycled through trainers over the last couple of years. And you have to wonder how that's going to affect him in this fight. This is the kind of fight, Greg, that I think Anthony Joshua could lose by an ugly decision. Because Waleen is pretty good at making fights ugly. And he's got enough skill, I think, to make things difficult for AJ in the ring. But let's say hypothetically that both AJ and Wilder win this fight. There are all signs, including a report from ESPN, that it is signed and sealed to have Anthony Joshua against Deontay Wilder in Saudi Arabia in the first quarter of 2024. This is a fight that we have been talking about for at least the last five years, if not longer. Both these guys have had some stumbles along the way. Both these guys are a little bit older. Do you think AJ Wilder is past its expiration date? You know, I, I don't think so, in part because I think that this has always been an intriguing fight. You know, you have two guys that have had a ton of success in the heavyweight division. Both, I think you could argue, have had some pretty seminal moment. And stylistically, I always thought it would be interesting, right? Like, both have power. Uh, AJ can obviously move a little better. It's a fight that I think people have, have been interested in watching. And so in terms of the heavyweight division and how it's spinning right now, I think that's as good as any fight that could be made or at least up there in the neighborhood. Yeah, I, I think the short answer of is it past its expiration date is yes, because you know Wilder's been knocked out twice by Tyson Fury and AJ is coming off back-to-back -back losses to Alexander Usyk and is, you know, he's lost more than he's won over the last uh, few years, or at least lost close to as many as he's won. Um, but while the answer is yes, I don't care because that's still the most interesting fight in all of boxing. I mean, in February, we are going to get a title unification fight between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. I would be far more interested in watching a fight between Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder because both those guys have fight-changing power. Both those guys 
have colossal right hands. Both those guys are tremendous finishers. So in terms of watchability, I'm still all in on AJ against Wilder, more so even than Fury against Usyk. It's just a far more uh, entertaining fight to me. That's why, you know, one of the benefits of Saudi Arabia's foray into boxing is that we don't have to wait as long for some of these fights. We're not waiting for Fury against Usyk because the Saudis want to put it on. We're not waiting for AJ against Wilder because the Saudis want to put it on. Hell, there's a pretty good chance that we're going to see Dimitri Bivol against Archer Beterbiev in the first half of 2024 because the Saudis want to put it on. So um, I think we're going to get it. I think it's going to be good television. That's for sure. Maybe it's not the skill level. Maybe it's not as meaningful as what it might have been uh, a few years ago. But I still think we're going to get it at, uh, uh, it's still going to be a must watch for me.